So now that you contributed to your HSA and have money in it, then how do you invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or ETFs with HSA funds? Let me first show you how HSA self-directed brokerage generally works. Okay. So this is your HSA and you can contribute either directly from your paycheck in pre-tax dollars or directly from your checking account. Most people choose to just automatically contribute from their paychecks to lower their taxable income throughout the year. But if you choose to contribute directly from your checking account, which will be in after tax dollars, you can still get your tax return from the IRS for making after tax contributions. And when you initially make the contribution, it goes directly to the core savings account or the money market fund. Okay. And that's inside your HSA. It doesn't accrue much interest in the core savings account, except for one broker, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Once you have money, in the core savings uh, of your HSA, then you can make the transfer to your investment account of your HSA. And certain HSAs have different rules. You can either directly invest with the HSA broker if it allows you, or the HSA broker has a contract with another broker like Fidelity or TD Ameritrade to invest in stocks, bonds, or mutual funds. So think of your HSA bank as your core savings and TD Ameritrade as your investment account and you can transfer back and forth between the core savings account and the investment account as needed and people like me use the hsa as a separate investment vehicle other than my 401k and roth ira but anytime you want to make a withdrawal from your hsa it has to come from your core savings or the money market fund so if you have your hsa fully invested you have to first sell your investments wait for the funds to settle after the sale, and then the money will go back into the core savings account. This could usually take uh, anywhere between three and five days, so keep that in mind. Once the money is back into the core savings account, you can make the tr uh, transfer directly to your checking account. And the other option th is that you're going to have a debit card issued to you from the HSA. You can actually use this debit card to make direct purchases for your medical supply, dental copay, or contact lenses. But you have to make sure that they're qualified medical expenses in accordance with the IRS publication 502. And I talked about that in the earlier part of this live stream. And if you're watching this on replay, just go to my HSA playlist to watch the video about the withdrawal rules. Because if you use your HSA debit card for non-qualified medical expenses, you're gonna end up paying a 20% penalty, federal income tax and state income tax. The only exception is if you're at least 65 years old, then the 20% penalty will be waived, but you'll still owe income taxes if you use it for non-qualified medical expenses. And I want to show you these rankings from uh, Morningstar, and you don't have to uh, agree on these rankings. And I'd love to hear your experiences in the comment section down below. And these brokers or banks were ranked based on their fees, investment strategies, and the amount of money you keep in spending accounts before investing. So let's take a look at Fidelity here, right? And I got to say, it is a great brokerage account, not just for HSA, but for Roth IRA. My wife has her traditional and Roth IRAs with Fidelity, which I went over in my other videos. You can check it out in my Roth IRA playlist. Fidelity's money market fund before investing actually pays you 4.5% in interest at the time I'm recording this video. And other HSA banks and brokers only pay probably around 0.1 or 0.01% in interest. And if you uh, if you just keep it in cash. So just a savings account alone, Fidelity has an excellent HSA. And I want to show you this real quick. So I encourage you to join my private Facebook group or become a member of my channel because I have a public live stream and private group session every other Wednesday to talk about all kinds of financial independence investment and early retirement strategies. You can visit firesidechat.com slash pricing or firesidechat.com slash coaching to schedule your financial coaching session. Let's look at the comparison between self-directed Fidelity HSA and manage Fidelity Go HSA. And most people choose to do the self-directed uh, Fidelity HSA to invest in mutual funds or ETFs. And you have full control of your investments and how you want to diversify your investments. 
You can also do the managed investments and Fidelity will manage the investments for you, but they are going to charge, uh, charge you 0.35% right here uh, every year if you have $25,000 or more. So it makes sense that Fidelity is ranked number one in all of the HSA investments because even with the managed investments, they only charge you 0.35% of $25,000, which is only $87.50 every year. And if you have less than $25,000, they don't charge you any fees at all. But let me scroll all the way down here under spending here. And I want you to keep in mind that it can take, like I said earlier, anywhere between three and five days to withdraw your money because it takes up to three days to sell your investments and then move the money from HSA uh, investment account to your checking account. But if you need to make direct purchases for medical expenses, Fidelity will give you a debit card that you can use to shop at the pharmacy, uh, Walgreens or CVS. If your investments are managed by Fidelity, then it might take you up to 10 days to make the withdrawal. Back to the Morningstar rankings. Uh, let's take a look, look at the next one. Home e uh, health equity is ranked second, but the quality of investment is ranked average. I don't know why. I'll look into that later on. But with an overall score of 4.2. And Lively is actually a very popular HSA broker because their app made it look really easy. And I know quite a few people who are self-employed that have HSA with Lively. And if you're someone with employees, you can sign up your employee with HSA for just $3 a month. So check out that website when you get a chance. Uh, the next one, the HSA authority doesn't change charge any fees when you put money with them, but the quality of investments is graded as below average. And just because Morningstar says it's below average, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's below average. I want you to do your own research and find out your investment options before opening an HSA. And let's skip to HSA Bank. Yeah, because HSA Bank is another popular HSA broker that is connected directly with TD Ameritrade. And I'm actually surprised that I got a, a score of 3.2 out of 5. And it looks like the fees are relatively high, but it does rank... Uh, its quality of investments as above average. Take a look at HSA Bank here. Uh, it has two uh, brokerage options between the Devonir uh, guided portfolio and TD Ameritrade self-directed brokerage. And from the reviews I read, most people choose to use TD Ameritrade self-directed brokerage because Devonir only limits you to trade their specific mutual funds. And you have more freedom to choose it looks like with TD Ameritrade, uh, which is now a part of Charles Schwab since the merger happened a few years ago. But I'm pretty sure it's still going to say TD Ameritrade on it. And with TD Ameritrade, you have the option to trade in stocks, uh, bonds, ETFs, and thousands of mutual funds. And the 401k with my previous employer was actually with TD Ameritrade. And I was a big fan of their brokerage website because it was very easy to use. Okay, I have Optum Bank. And I'm not surprised that it has scored 3.0 out of 5 because the fees are actually pretty high. And I'm actually thinking about switching my HSA in the next open season because I have it through my employer. And I'm stuck with Optum Bank because my health insurance is with United Healthcare. And they're contracted with Optum Bank for my HSA. And I started investing in my HSA with Optum Bank in 2022 because my previous employer didn't offer a high deductible health plan or HDHP. And ever since I started investing in 2022, the total amount in the HSA is pretty close to $10,000. And that only took almost uh, about a year and a half by maximizing my HSA contributions. And But the investments inside the Optum Bank it, are actually pretty limited. And they only offer actively managed mutual funds, a few index funds, and target day retirement funds. And I know this is kind of hard to see, but you can actually just zoom in on YouTube on your device. Uh, I didn't know you could do that. I found that out pretty recently. But it looks like Optum Bank just picked some mutual funds from Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity, and Invesco. And if you don't know anything about the asset class, it's hard to you know it's hard to understand what you should invest, right? 
I don't think Optum Bank is very user friendly or easy for the uh, the new HSA investors to understand what they are. And looking at this list, they only have one large cap index fund, which is the Vanguard uh, S&P 500 index fund, ticker symbol VFIAX. They also have international uh, fixed income, small cap, medium cap, and a mix of equity and bond mutual funds. And they also have the uh, target date retirement funds with Schwab, but they're limited to 2020, 2030, 2040, 2050, 2060. And if you look at Fidelity, they're broken down to a five-year increment. But you know, keep in mind that some of these funds are pretty expensive, charging about one or two percent in expense ratio. The Vanguard Index Fund charges you, um, what is it, around 0.04 or 0.06 percent in expense ratio, which is much cheaper than one or two percent in expenses. So if you ask me if I would recommend Optum Bank, I would probably say no. And that's my honest opinion based on my personal experience. And I'm just not a fan of paying monthly investment fees and how limited the investment options are. Ever since I started investing in my HSA in 2022, the total amount in the HSA is pretty close to five figures. And that only took almost a year and a half by maximizing my HSA contributions. Then I'm also going to reveal how much I have in my HSA and what investments I have in my HSA in the group, uh, private group session immediately after this live stream. So if you're interested in that, make sure to sign up for my private group on my YouTube page or go to firesetcher.com slash pricing. And if you're brand new to investing in HSA and wondering which broker is right for you, I think you'll get the most out of it with Fidelity's HSA because one, uh, they have the 4.5% APY for their core savings account or the money market fund. And they have more options to invest like stocks, bonds, and index funds. And if you already have an HSA, take advantage of the quadruple tax benefits that come with the contributions, uh, growth, and withdrawals. If you have an HSA that requires you to pay a lot of fees, maybe consider switching your HSA broker. You know, I'm sure almost anyone can agree that paying unnecessary management and brokerage fees could hurt the overall return on investment. So I strongly encourage you to check out my other HSA videos if you're watching this on replay. Just go to my channel and find the playlist name Health Savings Account. And as much as I love to go through every single HSA broker, I don't want to make this live stream any longer than it needs to. And this has been another absolute beast of a video, and I hope you got a lot out of it.